Hello and welcome to the video. In this video I'm finally going to be able to show you how to upgrade to OpenTX 2.2 because the OpenTX 2.2, the official version, finally came out on the 30th of May. Now I've been watching the OpenTX 2.2 version just get over the finish line and I'm hoping that it's really stable. Now normally I would wait for OpenTX 2.2.1 or even 2.2.2 or 2.2.3 to install it onto a radio but because so many subscribers have been asking for this video I thought you know what now we've got our first official version and Companion is now updated officially to OpenTX 2.2 as well. Let's do the whole thing and show everybody the process. Now, the information that's out there is definitely worth having a look through. All of the links I'm going to put on the screen, I'm going to pop in the description. So if you're interested in going and finding out more, then have a read. I definitely go and have a read of the release notes uh, in opentx.org. And again, I'll put that in the description if you want to just click on it. You can read up all about it, about what is new, what's changed, and uh, some of the warnings, and also some of the known issues. Now... The interesting thing is if you go to the bottom here, you can see an example of one of the big changes that have happened. If you look at the Lua script on this page, you can see now that finally you have the support for the bi-directional communication to the S6R and the S8R. Now, those are things we've looked at in the past, but we were kind of waiting for OpenTX 2.2 because they need, ideally, to be able to easily set up and configure them using the Lua scripts on the radio itself. Now the Lua scripts are provided in this latest version and uh, also the telemetry, the bi-directional telemetry that sits underneath it that allows them to work is all in here as well. At the very bottom of the page it talks about the things that have changed since the last release candidate. Uh, the changes seem to be the majority of stuff was about Horus and Companion. The kept in lots of things popping up with problems uh, with the Horus that had to be sorted out. The stuff for the classic X9D and X9D plus Tyrannus radios and the QX7 seem to be pretty much squared away a couple of months ago. So I'm hoping the fact that no new issues have appeared in the last couple of months that have been taken care of by this, that that actually means we're in good shape. A couple of other useful places to go to for resources and information. OpenTX University is very handy. Again, I'll put this link in the description. All of the V2.2 resources are here, but actually this is a great place if you're just looking for resources for any version of OpenTX. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be installing the Amber Sound pack. I'll download it from here. I haven't had a chance to fully test it yet, so hopefully it's going to work really well. I'm a big fan of the Amber Pack. It sounds great on the radio, and it's the voice I'm used to listening to when I'm flying. So without any further ado, let me show you the process that we're going to go through. First thing to do is to read the release notes and download Companion from the links in the description. It's available for both Macs and Windows as well, so if you're a Mac user, you're not stuck. When Companion first runs, after you've installed it, it'll immediately ask you to download firmware and do other bits and pieces. Just say no and cancel out all of that stuff. The reason being is that you really need to set up the profile and do some housekeeping on your radio first before you start getting out the firmware flashing pieces. So what I would do is go into the profile section of Companion and create a new profile and set one up for your radio. Give it a name that you're going to find useful, set up all the pieces. Now there's a big list here of options that you can enable or disable for the firmware that you're about to flash, and it will compile and create the firmware for the options that you have selected. If you're not sure what each of these are, if you just hover your mouse over them, it'll actually tell you. Um, I've chosen just a few really. The ones I'm really excited about is having the Lua script, and if you're in the European Union, you should be clicking this box. It'll disable D8 protocol, but that's not legal in the EU anymore. If you're in the US, you can leave that unticked. Once you've made those choices, you can have your own custom splash screen. I've made my own custom one, surprise, surprise. It needs to be a monochrome bitmap, and it needs to be 128 pixels wide by 64 tall if you're going to use a QX7. Now, I have shown how to do bitmaps and to create these things in the full Tirana series so if you want to know more about that go and have a look at that video but I would just use a standard image editor find an image that you like crop it to that size save it as a monochrome bitmap and then you can upload it into here a couple of options at the bottom that you probably want to turn on as well to make sure that the process is as easy as possible and then 
click OK. Once you've done that, then we can start to think about flashing the firmware once we've backed up everything that's currently on the radio. Now you need to connect the radio to the computer. The way you do it on the QX7 is you hold the two horizontal trim tabs into the center and briefly press the power button. The USB connects is at the bottom, so plug a USB cable into that, pop it into the computer. And then in Companion, you want to do a couple of things. All of the stuff here is on the left-hand side. You want to back up the existing firmware from the radio to a file. Now, the Companion should be doing that backup anyway as part of the upgrade, but I like a separate discrete file in case something goes horrifically wrong. So I would save that somewhere on your computer that you're going to be able to find it if you have a problem. Similarly, I'd also back up the EEPROM as well. That is where all the models are kept. So that is all your model memories. Now, to do this upgrade and for everything to work okay, you have to be running OpenTX 2.1. So if you're currently an OpenTX 2.0 user, you're going to have to upgrade to 2.1 first and then to 2.2 because it's expecting to migrate OpenTX 2.1 style model memories. Once you've done all that, then you can flash the firmware to the radio. The flashing of the firmware itself is really, really quick. So quick, I wasn't even sure that it worked properly. Once the firmware is on there, then you can unplug the USB cable, power off your radio, and the next time you power it on, it should have your new splash screen, and you should be able to navigate and have a look at the new OpenTX 2.2 bits and pieces. But you'll probably find that when you power it on, you will get an error, specifically an error around the SD card version. Now, a lot of pilots, when they first got the QX7, came across this problem and that's because on the SD card contents themselves in the very root directory there is a file called opentx.sdcard.version that needs to be in the root directory of the card but you can download the SD card contents again from the links in the description and you need to copy all those files onto your SD card. Again just as a safety measure I would always copy the SD card content somewhere safe so you can always go backwards but once you've copied the current SD card and the way I do that is I tend to just pop it out the bottom of the radio it's much faster than trying to do it through the radio's firmware itself copy the SD card contents that you've downloaded including that OpenTX SD card dot version file copy them all into the root directory and make sure that you're overwriting every single file. You'll notice that there's a couple of extra subdirectories in here. Excitingly, one of them is called S6R, and in S6R there are actually two Lua scripts, one to configure the S6R and the other one to calibrate it. So finally, now we've done this, I will be able to go on and make a video showing how to use Lua scripts on the radio, but specifically how to set the S6R up in a fixed wing model. Hooray! The other thing that I've done as well is you can download the Amber Pack. If you go to that OpenTX University link, you can download the Amber Pack from there as well. There is a full set of files that you can copy into the sounds directory on the SD card as you're copying everything across. That will, again, overwrite a lot of the default sounds that are in there, but it will give you that wonderful silky Amber voice that we all like. Once you've done that, pop the SD card back into your transmitter, and when you power it on, you'll get Amber's voice, and you Welcome will be fine. You'll get rid of that version problem, because that file and all the versions on the SD card are the right ones for OpenTX 2.2. Last couple of things I'd do would be just go through and test the models are okay, that the transfer and upgrade from OpenTX 2.1 has worked well. Last thing I'd also do is long press the menu button and just recalibrate your radio and your sticks to make sure that everything is absolutely spot on. Once you've done that, you are now on OpenTX 2.2 and you've done the upgrade. So join us for future videos in the Tyrannus QX7 and OpenTX Mix Companion as we now start to work in anger on answering questions and addressing problems that people are having on this new version of the firmware. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video and particularly for watching right to the very end. We try and release a video on Tuesday and Friday and sometimes we'll release one or two extra ones in a week as well.
All of the videos on the channel are organized into easy to use playlists. So do have a look in there because if you're interested in a subject, we organize all the videos on that subject so you can find them easily all together in one place. If you like what we're doing, then please like and subscribe and tell others about the channel so they can come and join as well. We're available in all of the usual social media places, particularly in places like Instagram, Twitter, and we also share all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse.